Consequently, consequently, members should members oh 
<laughs> Members should view their function as Wake ministers up. of the gospel through music, song, dance, and drama. Therefore, members should respond to their call from God our Father to render the service to Him in a manner worthy of His calling. Membership on the team in any way is a position of Christian leadership. To be a Christian leader is to be, first and foremost, a servant. Our primary function then is to serve God by leading under the guidance of the Holy Spirit and the direction of the leader, the congregation at hand in true worship. We emphasize that our purpose and calling is that of leading others into the presence of the living God and serving the body of Christ through the edification and displaying of our God-given gifts and talents. We are not up front to call attention to ourselves, but to God. Therefore, members must strive continuously, continually through prayer an example to be of a heart before God and others. We just want to thank you again for coming out, for joining us here. We are so honored and humbled that you would allow us to do this in front of you. And I would just like to open up tonight's service in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you and we praise you. Lord, it is to worship that we live. Father, we do live to worship you. We thank you for the freedom that we have in you. Lord, you are everything to us. You're the reason we move. You're the reason we breathe. Yes, Lord. Lord, you're the very fundamental core of all of our existence. Hallelujah. God, you came down. You bore our sins. You took our pain. You took our penalty. Thank you, Jesus. So what else can we do but sit at your throne and give you love? Thank you. Jesus. Lord, we just give this whole night to you. We give it as a night of worship. As our bodies should be worshipped, as our lives should be worshipped, we give you this evening as worship. And we go forth with the promise that the rest of our lives will be spent worshipping and praising you. Amen. 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 Jesus. Excuse me. Excuse me. Are you Crystal? Hi there. My name's Miss Sweeney. I'm new around here. Yeah. Yeah. I've been told to speak to you about doing short-term missions. Is that right? I would like to do missions, but I'm only interested in, I want to go to like, maybe some missions in Costa Rica, or Australia, or maybe Paris would be nice. I could really do some good out there. Hey man, let's go, yes, all right, all right, cheerio, cheerio. Well, anyway, my name's Miss Swilly. I'm going to let you around here like, oh, so, all right, oh, we will catch up later, Chris, so you and I. All right, all right, cheerio, thank you. <laughs> I started talking to a boy and my parents were not, um, they did not permit me to date, but I did anyways, I rebelled and um, because of that I ended up getting pregnant at 14, I had my son at 15. It was a really hard experience because um, I was kind of looked at as the tainted one, but, and I, I just felt like at that point I had gone so far away from God because everybody knew about my sin and it was very obvious with the baby growing in my belly that I had done something wrong and that um, I was no longer um, a good girl or a girl that was lovable or touchable anymore. And things just got a lot worse. I um, started using cocaine and doing ecstasy. Um, and, and the whole time was just my heart um, was wounded. And that was my, my, my key for it. I found that when I was angry, I turned to it. When I was happy, I turned to it. When I was uh, sad, I turned to it. When I was bored, I turned to using and drinking and men. I cut myself um, so many times. One of the times when I cut myself, I got a kitchen knife and I just cut everything open on my arms and decided that that was the day I was going to die. And I meant it when I did and, and I ended up, I don't remember what happened, I just know I woke up in the hospital and the doctors were shocked that I could even have any use of my tendons. When I woke up, there was a nurse in the room who was talking to me about Jesus. I don't remember what she looks like. It was really dark. And she just told me that um, I could go back to him. 
So this is John 6, 39. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing. And what this means to me during the two years that I it took for me to get into obedience to Christ Jesus, um, I questioned on and off whether I belonged to him. And, and it was scary because under my own, I, there's no way that I could ever be taken care of because I am human and I am dust and I am frail. And he is the one who's holding it all together. And this was like the glue that kept me from wanting to kill myself during those two years. So when I got back to the Dream Center, um, all of the women and the people that knew me from before um, weren't passing judgment. They were just like, we're happy to have you home. And I felt like that was um, an outside reflection of what I can't see from my visible God. Um, I mean, he is, he's visible through all of these things, but um, that was like Jesus giving me my hug and my kiss and saying, we're just happy you're alive, we're happy you're safe. Um, if, if God is forgiving you, then we are obligated to forgive you. We want to forgive you. I'm around a body of, of people that are after God's heart, and he looks at the heart, he doesn't look at the actions. And I'm just, I'm seeing tremendous changes in me and, and in my brothers and sisters. And I can't thank God enough for everything he's opening up for me. And, and the number one thing is that um, beautiful plan of redemption and reconciliation to a holy God. Because in that, if I've been reconciled to the most holy God, I can be reconciled to anybody. So that's just hope. That's hope. And, and I just want to say it anyway. Extravagant respect, honor, or devotion, an act of adoration, thanksgiving, thankfulness, appreciation for what God has done or revealed in your life. Worship is not just the singing, the reading, or listening to somebody else's understanding of the Bible. Worship means to practice the presence of God. For example, I love Frank Austin, but I don't need him to invite me or cheerlead me into the presence of God. Worship is a lifestyle choice. Look, it consists of a feeling in the heart, okay, stemming from the humbling but delightful sense of admiring awe, astonishing wonder of the God of the universe. I don't need a church setting to be in the presence of God. Although I do understand the importance of corporately bringing my individual worship into something bigger than myself. With, okay. The coexistence with God rooted from a personal experience of who God is to you and what God has done for you is how I understand my worship. Are you, are you thankful for what God has done in your life? Are you, is anyone in here thankful for what God has done in your life? Yeah! The strength of your thankfulness, the degree of the passion that you have for our God in heaven, that will determine the degree of your worship. Thankfulness for what God has done in your life. Second Samuel, First Samuel, fifteen twenty-two states: Does the Lord delight in burnt offering and sacrifices as much as in obedience? In the voice of the Lord, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed is better than the fat of rams. This truth being told should make you look twice at Romans 12.1. Mm. 
Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your body as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Mm. To worship is to quicken the conscience by the holiness of God. To feed the mind with the truth of God. <laughs> to purge the imagination by the beauty of Yahweh. To open the heart to the love of God. To devote the will to the purpose that God has for your life. Luke 4 8. When Satan offered Jesus everything, when he was trying to tempt him, he answered simply with this It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. What do you do when you go home? What are you thinking about? Are you worshiping your God? Who are you going to choose to worship? Worship is, is our, our response to God's, God's love. Amen. Program. Is that right? I'm one of the people you can speak to. Amen. Well, my heart is willing and ready, and I just have some few things I need to bring with me. I've got some ferrets. I cannot leave them behind. Well, I will take the pastor Greg. Is that all right? Hey, they should say. All right. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much. All right. All right. All right. Cheerio. Cheerio. Okay. So the ferrets, is that going to be an issue? And I've got some canaries, too. <laughs> so a little while ago, um, you know, I was thinking about my life, and I was thinking about, you know, I completely broke. And then the year transition that I have, the year being here, like, going from complete brokenness to finding my completion in him like it was such a journey and, and so he gave me a song and I wrote the song just for his glory and I, I just I hope you guys can feel what he's done in my life and what he can do in each and every one of your lives Jesus, only you, my 
<laughs> Stupid. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, that house well, can go too. Take the offering right now is Pastor Walter. Right, come up. Let's Whoa. give him a pass here. Right. Yeah. Praise the Lord. What a wonderful day this has been, huh? Amen. We get to top yeah. off tonight yeah. by just coming together as a family Amen. and having a good time. Amen. In fact, we've got some of our Navy friends. Outstanding! Woo! idea is to build people and build the kingdom of God. And you know God is starting to really touch us, raise us up, and use us. But until